David Raskin, a student trying to get into MIT, conducts an experiment to submit as a video demonstration, assisted by his best friends Quinn, Adam, and his sister Christina. He shows that he made a drone that can be controlled with hand movements. A phone rings, they lose the signal, and the drone crashes. And so it begins. Welcome to Random Recaps. In this video, I am going to recap the movie. Days later, we see Christina recording her brother as he looks for the MIT acceptance letter. David opens the letter and finds out he has been accepted to MIT. However, the celebration is short-lived because he only receives a partial scholarship and doesn't have enough money for the rest. How are you going to afford that? After that, we see that his mother has put their house up for sale to pay for his college. David doesn't want his mother to sell the house. In the attic, David searches for ideas for another experiment. Christina finds an old camera that belonged to their father, and they find a video from when David was seven years old, in which they suddenly see an older David passing by the mirror. Holy shit. David shows the video to his friends, although his sister believes it's a camera glitch. His friends don't pay much attention, but when David pauses the video, they realize it is David, though his sister remains skeptical. The next day at school, David and his friends continue investigating why he appears in the video. By mistake, David has a backpack that isn't his. He returns it to Jesse, feeling shy, although Jesse is nice to him and congratulates him on MIT. Yeah. Congrats on MIT. After that, they go to his house to figure out why he appears in the video. While piecing together clues from the recording, they find a switch that leads them to the basement. They go down and discover a secret lab belonging to David's deceased father, where they find a box scene in the video recording. They start examining the plans and realize that his father was building a time machine. What? Holy shit! Quinn deduces that in the future, they must have built the machine, which is why David appears in the video. The next day, they start buying things to build the machine. Excuse me, sir, but where is your time machine section? They conduct the first test to power the crystal circuit, and when they turn it on, Christina's hair rises due to the electromagnetic energy generated by the machine, but it overloads. They use an Xbox to help construct the machine. The next day at school, they find a way to control the machine. They continue building the machine day after day. David touches something and everything starts spinning. It overloads and David gets a stain on him, exactly like the one in the video. Does this seem familiar to you? Oh my God! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the Everybody procedure, stay calm. everyone? What's the procedure? Stay calm! Wait, wait, wait. They need hydrogen, so they sneak into the school to get it. They steal the hydrogen and run out. Back in the basement, they test the machine by sending a toy one minute into the past. They turn on the machine, but it doesn't work. They try again, and this time it turns on, but everything goes haywire because they need a stronger power source. David asks Jesse to park her car at his house. A Toyota Prius, which can regenerate its battery energy, is used to power the machine. They test the machine as quickly as possible before Jesse arrives. They turn on the machine. The camera floats. Chris grabs it. Jesse returns, looking confused. The energy overloads and the power goes out. The boys check the car and see it has fused with the wall. Adam realizes that the car traveled two hours back. It worked. We sent something back in time. Okay. The next day, David designs a prototype so the machine can fit in a backpack. After that, Jesse shows up and asks what they plan to do with the machine. Jesse suggests the next step is to use it on themselves. David notices that Jesse's keychain looks like the one he has in the video from the past. He shows it to Jesse. One night, they test the machine on themselves, and David warns that they could explode if things go wrong. They prepare and start. At first, Jesse can't hear, but after a moment, it passes. They check if it really worked by going to Quinn's house, and Quinn draws a mark on himself. When the past Quinn wakes up, things get weird, and they run, celebrating that they traveled 24 hours back. It's yesterday! <laughs> a 
dog chases them, and David presses the button to return, bringing the dog with them. When they return, they see flyers saying the dog is lost. The next day, David and Jesse set rules for time travel, like not traveling alone, recording all trips, and keeping it all secret. They travel back in time to help Quinn pass his chemistry test, but the teacher asks something he didn't ask before. We didn't ask that last time, so why would I know that? That's Last time? What the hell are you talking about? So Quinn fails, and they travel again to try another time, but the teacher asks something different again. Goldberg, this is about comp comprehension, not memorization, I know. They travel again. Again? Seriously? And this time Quinn answers everything correctly. Boom, Lou! That just happened! In the next trip, they help Christina get revenge on a girl who bullies her. I'm everywhere, bitch. Another trip they make is to win the lottery, but they get the number wrong. So they don't win as much money as they thought. Well, they win a million, but they wanted more. David gives part of the money to his mom, Quinn buys a car, and Christina buys lots of clothes. After that, Jesse and David talk for a while. Jesse asks how his father died. I don't even really know, to be honest with you, I don't know the whole story. The next day, Quinn brings food trucks and gives food to everyone. Later, David gathers everyone to travel three months back to attend the Lollapalooza Music Festival, and they have fun all day. At one point, David and Jesse go to a wall where people write what they would do if it were the end of the world. Jesse says she would want to fall in love before the world ends. At that moment, Jesse wants David to kiss her, but when he doesn't, she gets upset and leaves. You poor, ugly thing, you. Adam kisses Christina. The group returns to the present, and David and his sister realize their mom has a job. When did she get a job? Which is strange because she was unemployed. The next day at David's house, when Jesse is about to leave, David tells her he wants to talk. He mentions that they had a special moment at Lollapalooza, which Jesse denies and says they should ignore what happened. You poor, ugly thing, you. That night, David travels alone to the moment at Lollapalooza, and this time he kisses her. He returns to the present, loves Jesse, and notices her phone is there. Jesse walks in with a towel, making David nervous, and they spend the night together. After that, David's mom tells him she has job interviews, which is strange because she had a job in the past. At school, David is congratulated for a party. David is confused, noticing everything is strange. Later, his friends see tragedies happening that they don't remember. There was a plane crash. David, 77 people on board a flight from London to Madrid. It happened five days ago. The plane carrying the father of the popular girl crashes because her brother Justin broke his leg and couldn't attend the game. They believe it's their fault. Adam thinks their actions at Lollapalooza caused everything. Everyone tells David they need to fix it by going back and not traveling to Lollapalooza, but David refuses. He fights with Quinn. After that, David tells Adam that he traveled alone. Why would you ever jump alone, David? Adam gets angry with him for breaking their pact. David doesn't want to confess to the others, so he travels alone to the first time the machine worked to prevent Justin from being hit by a car and succeeds. David returns to the present and fixes the tragedy. But when he returns, he finds out his friend Adam is in the hospital. David goes to his car, feeling a bit crazy. He goes home and tries to figure out how to fix everything. David travels back in time and Jesse arrives, so she travels with him. Jesse argues with David for traveling alone. David, how many times have you done this before? And David tells her he went back because of Lollapalooza. That's why you and I... Oh, Jess, listen. They hug and forgive each other. But then past Jesse appears, and both past and present Jesse disappear. Desperate, David returns and realizes he has no more hydrogen, finds Jesse's keychain, and Quinn shows up at his house, telling him Jesse disappeared. David admits it was his fault. Jesus, how many times have you jumped? Doesn't even matter anymore. The police come, and Quinn doesn't want him to travel, but David is determined to ensure they never build the machine. The police arrive, and David escapes. David goes to the school for nitrogen, steals it, and uses it to power the machine. David travels to 2004, goes to his house, and it's the same moment from the birthday video where he appears in the mirror. 
David follows his father to the basement to talk to him. His father realizes it's David. Hi, Dad. We see David burning all the machine plans. His father hugs him before he leaves. David destroys the machine. In the present, the camera they used to record everything has all the footage, and we see Chris and David in the attic finding the camera. The dad have two old cameras? After that, at school, where he exchanged backpacks with Jesse, David approaches her and says something to her. This is gonna sound crazy, but I think we're about to change the world. And that's how the movie ends.